Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will see an application of SL2 representation theory in combinatorics. So, this work indeed uh, suggested by Richard Stanley. So, he demonstrated uh, the power of uh, algebraic techniques uh, that can be actually used in used to get uh, some interesting results in the representation in combinatorics. So, uh, towards that actually like uh, so, we will actually see one example and then I will demonstrate how one can use SL2 representation theory to get some applications in combinatorics. So, the problem that uh, we are interested in, uh, we want to actually uh, prove some unimodality of uh, some interesting numbers that uh, naturally appears uh, in combinatorics. So, the problem that uh, we are going to address today is uh, counting the number of unlabeled uh, iso isomorphic graphs of n vertices and khs. So, so, basically we start with uh, uh, something called simple graphs, okay. So, finite simple graphs. So, what does it mean? That means it has no loops and uh, no multiple edges, okay. So, we only uh, count whether uh, there is an edge between given two vertices or not, okay. So, let us always take the uh, indexing of the vetting set is to be 1 to n. So, this we will keep it as vertex set. For example, when n equal to 2, so we have two vertices, either there is an edge between 1 and 2 or uh, there is no edge. So, only two graphs are possible. So, if we take n equal to 3, then we have three vertices. So, there would not be any edge between them and then we can put one edge uh, between two vertices, but the choice of that pair of vertices does not matter because we want to actually talk about unlabeled uh, graphs. So, that means uh, we do not care about actually uh, the lab labeling of the vertices. So, if you count this unlabeled graphs up to isomorphism with n vertices and given k number of edges that is the number that we are interested in. So, if we take n equal to 3 with 0 vertex, zero edge there is only one graph, with 1 edge there is only one graph and if we take uh, 2 edge again there is only one graph and with the 3 edge there is only one graph, okay. So, the choice of vertices do not matter in the unlabeled graph. So, let us denote g n k by the number of okay, of course, non isomorphic unlabeled unlabeled graphs with n vertices and k edges. Okay. So, this is of course, we are counting always modulo the isomorphs. So, we are going to only consider simple graphs, simple finite graphs, simple finite graphs. Okay. So, what we are going to climb? So, the climb is these numbers are very interesting, they appear in many places. For fixed n, this sequence, sequence g and k, where k runs over from 0 to whatever that n max, it is indeed unimodal. Okay. One can easily see that when n grows really very big, then these numbers actually grows really, really very big. So, we do not have any uh, indeed uh, computationally they are very difficult to compute, but one can make such very nice statements about these numbers without even computing them. So, that is the power of these algebraic techniques. So, how one can approach uh, uh, this problem? 
ओके सो टू अप्रोच दिस प्रॉब्लम फर्स्ट वाउट वी विल डू वी विल एक्चुअली कंसिडर लेबल ग्राफ्स एंड देन वी टेक द वेक्टर स्पेस स्पैन बाई दिस लेबल ग्राफ्स ओके सो देन वी कैन मेक द सेमेट्रिक ग्रुप एक्ट ऑन दैट सो देन दैट दैट एक्शन एक्चुअली लीव्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल अनलेबल्ड ग्राफ्स ओके so then uh, we can actually define sl2 action on this uh, the subspace which is actually kind of uh, our sub representation uh, which is spanned by this unlabeled graph so so using that one can actually uh, uh, try to prove this these numbers indeed uh, symmetric about the origin okay so we are going to very explicitly can construct sl2 action on some important subspaces of this uh, n labeled uh, uh, graphs and then we will use sl2 representation theory to prove this result so let's see how one can do this uh, step by step so i am only going to outline the proof because uh, the computations are very simple okay one has to just simply sit and do the computation which i will leave it to you to check so let us start with uh, this wn okay so before that let's let's call this gn so gn this is the set of all let's say labeled graphs on vertices 1 to n the set of all labeled graphs okay on the set of vertices One to n. So we will use one to n for the vertices. Okay. So then you can take this uh, W n. So which is uh, going to be the direct sum of C span of all these graphs, where G comes from your uh, G n. Okay. so then uh, so naturally the symmetric group act on this okay so we have the symmetric group sn act on wn so by just permuting the vertices okay so by permuting the labels of a labeled graph okay so now we can also consider this uh, subspace wnk which is sitting inside wn okay so what is this this is the subspace spanned by all g in gn such that g has exactly k edges so this is the subspace spanned by all g in gn such that g has exactly k edges okay so now uh, this symmetric group is acting on wn and it also acts on this uh, wnk okay so now uh, if you think about it it is a simple exercise that if we take the number g and k so that is nothing but the dimension of this uh, fixed points of space okay so we can look at all possible okay s n invariant elements inside w and k then the dimension of that space is going to be exactly g and k so this is something very easy to see i will leave it as exercise so this w and k is a s n 
sub representation of Wn. Okay. So, that is something again easy to say. So, Wnk is Sn sub representation of Wn. So, in particularly we can talk about uh, fixed point elements inside that uh, sub representation. So, given any representation, okay, let us say G, group G acts, group G acts on a representation capital V, then the fixed point subspace will be those vectors in capital V such that G V equal to V for all G in G. Okay, this is called the fixed point uh, subspace. For example, all these things uh, naturally appears in the in the orbit stabilizer theorem and so on. Okay, so, we have uh, this uh, natural uh, identification. So, now uh, how are we going to use this uh, information to say something about G and K. Okay. So, this is where we need to actually define SL2 action on WN. So, we define SL2 action on WN. Okay. And of course, we can restrict that action to W and K and then we can look at what happens. So, this SL2 action that we are going to define, it will naturally commute with uh, SN. Okay. So, we want to define such that this action of SL2 on W n commutes with the action of SN. The action of S. Okay, so that is why one will be able to actually restrict the action. So let's first actually take uh, two indices i and j uh, from one to n. Okay, so then so basically given two vertices. So we are going to look at those vertices in a given graph G. So then there are only two possibilities, either there will be an edge between those two vertices or there may not be any edge between those two vertices. Okay. So, depending upon that, we are going to actually define some operator. So, we define the following operators. So, we call them Aij and Bij. So, Aij is, op is some operator that is actually takes the graph G and whenever there is no edge between i and j, it, it just adds up i j. Okay. So, a i j is defined from w n to w n. So, what it does? It takes g and then sends it to g union i j if i j is not an edge. Okay. This is the edge set of g. So, when there is no edge between i j, you just add that i j edge. So, then you can actually get a new graph which will have more edges than g, okay, exactly one more edge. Otherwise, you send it to 0. Okay. And how you define this b i j? Again, b i j is also naturally defined. So, you take some graph G and if there is an edge between i j, you just delete it. Okay. So, that is how the B i j is defined. So, you just take G and then the delete this edge i j. If i j is on edge in the given graph, otherwise you just send it to 0. Okay. So, basically uh, Aij includes this new edge I, between Ij and Bij just deletes if there is edge between Ij. So, these are all the two operators that we are interested in. Now, if you actually think about it, so whenever you have the tuple St which is different from let us say Uv, again those are all vertices. So, then we can consider this ASTBUV, these two operators. So, 
if you if you actually take this st which is different from uv then you can easily see that these operators ast and buv they actually commute okay so as an operators they must commute because these uh, vertices st and uv they are different in particularly the corresponding edges will be different okay so ast just adds whenever there is no edge between st and buv just deletes whenever there is an edge between uv so i will just leave it to you to check this this is something very easy to check now uh, we can actually compute what will happen uh, between the commutator ast bst when you apply it on g if you compute it ast comma bst the commutator on any given graph g then you can prove that it is going to give exactly g if st is an h otherwise it's going to give minus g so it's not going to change it too much whenever st is an h it is going to give you g otherwise it's going to give minus g so these two things are very easy computations i will leave it to you to you now using this operators a i j b a b i j one can actually define all the operators that we are interested in okay so recall to define a representation from sl to c to any gl of any vector space v you need to specify how the basis elements of sl to act so they are like x h and y how they act we have to say so if you are interested in actually defining this representation on a gl of wn so we have to say how one can actually define this uh, uh, these representations so we have already noticed so recall x h y so it is the basis of sl2 and they satisfies uh, these commutative relations in particularly bracket x y must be always h okay and hx is nothing but 2x and hy is minus 2y now using this relation one can easily see that in to define h it is enough to define x and y as an algebra sl2 is generated by x and y so it's enough to define what is x and what is y so that is what we are going to do so we are going to define what is this x w n and then what is this y w n and then one can extend it not a problem okay so basically the commutator of that is going to be h w n so uh, we are going to define that as follows you take x w n to be sum over all a i j where i less than j similarly what will be y w n that is going to be sum over all b i j where i less than j okay so now it's immediate that okay so i will leave it as leave it to check verify that if you compute the commutator x w n and y w n on any g okay where let's say g indeed comes from w n k where it has exactly k uh, vertices sorry k edges so then if you compute this commutator then you can see that this is going to give you exactly the eigen value 2k minus n choose 2 times g okay so that means this commutator indeed acts diagonally on wn on exactly wnk it acts with the eigen value 2k minus n choose 2 okay so that is something very important property of uh, sl2 action on any finite dimensional representation h should act diagonally okay so so now uh, to say that this is exactly giving us representation of sl2 so we have to verify the following formulas so i will leave it to you to verify so this is the first thing to verify the second thing is when you define h w n to be the bracket x w n and y w n 
then you have to verify that h w n comma x w n. So, this you can take it as a definition this is going to be give, going to give us twice x w n and similarly h w n y w n should give us minus twice minus 2 y w n. Okay. So, if you check all these three formulas then we have SL2 representation of SL2 action of uh, action on this W n. Okay. So, these are all routine checkup. So, I will leave it to you to check. So, now uh, we have the action of SL2 on uh, W n. So, now you can see that uh, this action is indeed actually like because everything is defined using this uh, AIJ and BIJ. It is easy to see that AIJ, BIJ they commute with the action of SN. Okay. So, because these operators X and Y they are defined using this sum of AIJ and uh, sum of BIJ. So, you can also see that uh, the both operators naturally commute with uh, the action of SN and similarly HN also commute with the action of SN. So, in particularly SL2 action on WN commutes with SN action. Now, what we can do? We can actually look at uh, what happens to W N K. Okay. So, note that uh, this uh, W N K. So, that is again uh, SN sub module. Okay. So, now uh, if we take uh, this uh, SL2 action okay because it commits with the uh, sn action so you can also see that uh, from this immediately uh, there is an there is this sl2 action on this fixed point subspace wnsn which is indeed decomposes as uh, wnksn where k runs over 0 to n okay so, SL2 action on WN commits with SN action. So, this implies there is a natural action, natural action on natural SL2 action on this space WN SL. So, in particularly, we have uh, this SL2 action on WNSN. Okay. So, SL2 action on WNSN. Now, uh, what is about H? How H acts? So, have H acts diagnosably because that is a computation that we did on WNK itself. Okay. If we take uh, WNK, you can see that for any G it is giving us uh, uh, so the action of uh, this commutator is giving us this 2k minus n choose 2g k is fixed so it's basically w n k is the weight space corresponding to 2k minus n choose 2 so if we look at this h action okay so the h action has the weights 2k minus n choose 2. So, h not only acts diagonalizably with the weights 2k minus n choose 2 for k get on equal to 2. So, this is immediate uh, thing. What is the weight space corresponding to this weight 2k minus n choose 2? Okay. So, we are we are actually looking at this action okay, SL2 action on WNSN. Same formula works so that you can see that H is also acting as diagnosably on this WN power SN with these weights. Now, what is the weight space? Now, the weight space of course, corresponding to the weight 2k minus n choose 2. 
So, this is going to be exactly W n k s n. Okay. So, these are all the weight spaces for us because the same formula that we calculated is going to tell us this. So, these are all the weight spaces. So, those are all the V k that we are interested in, but we know that the dimension of this W n k s n. So, this is nothing but just g n k. Okay. And you can see that all these weights, okay, if we take these weights, so these are all 2 k minus n choose 2. So, these all have same parity, okay, so they have same parity as n choose 2. Okay. That means, they are all either odd or they are all either even. But we have the inequality that actually tells the dimension of V naught is greater than or equal to dimension V2 and so on. Similarly, dimension of V1 is greater than or equal to dimension of V3 and so on. But here, since all the weights are either uh, even or odd, so that implies immediately that these numbers must be symmetric at 0 and unimodal. Okay. So, one can immediately see as a corollary of our previous results that G and K is unimodal and symmetric about 0, symmetric about 0 or the origin. Okay. That is because all the weights of this module that we have constructed, so that is indeed uh, all of them have same parity as n minus n choose 2. Okay. So, like this one can actually use uh, SL2 representation the, wherever we have the SL2 action. So, we can actually uh, use this action uh, to say something more about uh, the weight spaces and uh, the behavior of uh, the weight multiplicities. Okay. So, I, I hope you will be able to work out uh, uh, all the details of this uh, example. Okay. So, similar to this uh, maybe one can find many examples in the literature. Okay. This is indeed very nice approach to prove if, we, if for some reason if you know that uh, you have a sequence which is unimodal and symmetric about the origin then maybe like uh, there is natural SL2 action on that. One can actually look for that and then try to prove that uh, uh, because of that action it is actually becoming unimodal and symmetric about origin. Okay, I will stop here. Uh, we will actually continue with uh, some uh, examples of uh, representations in the next class. So, maybe we will see actually how to construct some new representations uh, from the old ones. Okay, thank you. We will see you next time.